She created history by winning the Women World Championship at the age of 16 and she's won it four times since. She's fearless on the board and off it. Women are inspired by her chess, men fear to play her. I'm very honored to have with us four times Women World Champion, who you fan. Hi, Tanya. Hi, you fan. Welcome back to Gibraltar. You really like it here. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's one of the best tournament, open tournament I've ever played, and this is my third time to be here. The first time was in 2012, where my results was kind of fantastic. Uh, I, I have to admit that uh, actually that tournament is one of my was one of my best tournament until this moment. Best women players are playing here, but for recent years, even there are so many top players. Uh, from the world are coming here. For example, this time I heard that the average rating from top 10 players is like 2,750 or something. It's That's incredible. amazing for an term, uh, open tournament. Also today I saw a website like 78 or 76 grandmasters yes. uh, are playing here. So I, I got surprised to see that uh, open could attract all players from the world to come here to this uh, very beautiful rock place. Absolutely. And you found out you travel a a lot with your mother. In fact, she's here with you this time as well. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that relationship and how much it uh, has there ever been any pressure or is it just full support? Mm, of course, it's uh, full of support. My mom accompanied me since very young age because I went to another province uh, to learn chess so when I was like uh, seven years old. So that's why at that moment my mom decided to kind of uh, uh, give, not give up but temporarily pause her job to accompany me and sooner or later we got used to this and currently my mom accompanied me mainly not because of uh, to take care of my daily life but uh, from psychological point of view we we both got used to this traveling tournament together it's very important to have uh, okay it could be best friends yes. or it could be relatives or the people you really really enjoy to spend time with them and uh, I could I could say like that and my mom really helped me a lot for this uh, a series of chess achievements right and now you're one of the big stars from China and China is a powerhouse in chess so what is the secret behind your country's success? Yeah, actually, um, for women's chess, actually, China has a brilliant resource even before I came to the chess world. Um, and in recent years, the, the open team, the men's chess, are actually improved a lot. China are well known by a, uh, teamwork. Yes. Especially where the uh, men are helping women to improve their chess results. But currently it's different because our boys, our guys, they also played quite well. So they also need to focus on their chess. So now that's why I said uh, the situation changed. Uh, probably there could be a small group or even by individual. But just like people, especially the young people, are encouraged by the previous results. So you wanted to devote themselves to the chess world. I'm always very glad to do some promotion, not only in China, but all around the world, especially for women's chess. But in China also, I could feel like uh, when the top players are like playing Simo, giving a lecture or things like that, or even giving a speech to share their experience, the young children are always really get inspired and wanted sure. to say, oh, uh, mom or dad, I really want to learn chess. It also reminds me one of my uh, early experience where I was uh, one of the participants to, uh, to play a Simon with a top grandmaster and after that game I mean I, I remember I was got some advantage and then the grandmaster offered me a drawer and I agreed very happy <laughs> and this, later I thought oh maybe I could also be a very good chess player so after that experience I, I think I was trying more harder on chess you were so, motivated even yeah, yeah 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 like uh, from my own experience I realized how motivated it could be and you found if you had to give one advice to the upcoming girls who are taking up the sport mm -hmm. professionally, who are at that level where they want to, they've decided that they want to play chess mm -hmm. as a career, what would be your advice to them? Hard to say. I mean, as a professional chess player, of course, I would say something like you should have a full concentration and the inspiration for chess. You should truly love it by your inner peace, not because of, uh, you know, your parents told you to learn or they told you it could be a good profession for your future career, but you should re truly love it. But on the other hand, I could also suggest that uh, while you're learning chess, you shouldn't give up like studying or other daily life from very young age until you could make the decision for your own life.
Because currently I see a lot of young kids where the parents wanted them to only learn chess, trying to be a top player at a young age. It's good, I mean, from one side, but on the other side, Mm, you also lack something of the life that uh, for that kind of age you could experience. So I suggest that uh, you should just uh, keep chess as one of your interests. Right. Yeah, until you could um, make up your mind that what kind of role you wanted to uh, want to experience in the future. Right. Now, Yvonne, you took a very big decision when you opted out of the Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. In many ways, you uh, were okay with letting go of your World Championship title without playing for it because you st strongly stand against the knockout system and you've been very vocal and passionate about it. You stand for what you believe in. But it must have been a very tough decision to make. Yeah, to actually to see backward, that was a very tough decision. But when I made it, it's like uh, naturally I had this idea. I want to set up my mind for this, not thinking that it's really a critical moment because I was under this circle more than more than six years since I won the first world champion and I played all the different formats so I could say that I have experienced that what kind of format is the most uh, um, could say most fair tournament to select the best player for both men and women so that's why I think in case to improve women's chess we need to suffer a moment that there will be somebody to stand out to say their point of view to express that uh, what could be the way the chess could improve in that sense and of course this is critical you know why because now it's kind of i need to even put myself more harder in case to be more compatible in the open section because right. the previous time probably i could say oh okay i might enjoy my performance in women's section i could kind of keep the title for many years it seems like this but now i mean i automatically like give up that chance and which means you need to like perform better in open section in case to you know to stand there and that's very interesting what you said and I think that is one of the big reasons why people draw so many parallels between you and Judith Polga because in many ways by being by far the strongest woman chess player you are letting go of that in many ways to even focus to be able to play in the top level open section I believe most of the female players are more or less uh, inspired um, by her experience or at least she's one of the model for the young generation i have to admit that although i think our case is not something exactly the same because judith quit women's chess at, the, at her very young age even she didn't call it i mean play any of the world championship circle but for my case it's different because for me i think at least you should um kind of showing your performance in women's section and then that could be your next step. So I just wanted to uh, make my own road. And you have often said that you are, uh, that chess is a big part of your life, but it's not your life. Yeah. But to be someone of your level, one would think that it requires 100% devotion. Mm -hmm. So how did you, I mean, how do you balance that out? And how is that even possible to be at this level mm -hmm. when chess is just a part of your life? <laughs> Well, I think that my something came from nature when I was born because I feel that I'm kind of person who doesn't think that there will only be one thing in your life you should focus on trying to be the best. On the other hand, I want to enjoy life from different spikes, trying to make myself step to the new directions, trying to experience more and trying to explore my uh, potentials in different areas. So chess is a part of my life and it contributes me until this moment. So I really appreciate it. But I also hope that to learn to ex uh, from this experience, I could make more for this world, not only contributes the chess for the next generation, but in general. So what is it that that would really keep really make you satisfied with your career in the game? Well, that's actually a good question. <laughs> May I say the answer? I mean, I don't really have an answer for that because normally I don't make an ultimate goal in any aspects of the life because I thought that once you achieve that, you might get confused by the or well, where you want to go in the future. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I thought in case of instead of that, I should make a. Um, like a small goal step by step, like pro um, progressively improve. Yes. In that case, you will have the hope for the life uh, at any moment. So that's why I guess for chess it's the same. That's very nice. So what you're saying is to make smaller goals and in the process of doing those smaller goals, achieve the bigger picture in life. 
Yeah, probably when you really achieve something uh, after after decades, and when you look back, you realize, ah, oh, actually that could be my ultimate goal. Let's say for chess or for other career. Yeah, I think that makes more sense in case to motivate yourself. Of course, probably because my personality is that I need something to motivate myself. I mean, if you are from different personality, probably you you could just make one goal and uh, step by step, um, how to say, continuously to achieve that. But for me, probably I'm another type of person. <laughs> right, no, well, we wish you all the best with your step-by-step -step goals and uh, yes, uh, all the best for this tournament as well. Thank you for talking to us. Thanks, my pleasure.